Since this is a new YouTube channel, you probably have no idea who I am. But this is my car, it's an Alfa Romeo 159 Sport Wagon and I absolutely love it. I bought it 9 months ago and I've already done over 30,000 kilometers with it. I've traveled all throughout Portugal, Spain, France, the UK, Germany, Austria, Italy and Slovenia. It's been all over the place. But this is the first time that I've actually owned an estate car or a station wagon as it's called in the US. I've owned hatchbacks, coupes and sedans but this is the first time that I've actually owned a car of this type and I really want to tell you why these types of cars actually beat SUVs and why your next car should be an estate car and not an SUV. Let's dive a little bit into the history of the Alfa Romeo 159. It was launched in 2005 as Alfa's successor to the 156, a car that sold fairly well and was highly regarded due to its driving characteristics. The 159 was a joint venture between the Italian brand and General Motors, with many units having GM engines. This 159 sport wagon, as the estate version is called, has a 1.9 liter JTDM diesel engine sending 150 horsepower to the front wheels through the 6-speed manual transmission. It's also a 2010 model, which means it comes after a small restyling and is one of the last 159s. The main difference is in the interior, which comes from factory with a bigger screen with sat-nav and turn-by-turn -turn directions that show on the cluster screen. If there's one thing in which estate cars are much better than SUVs is, of course, practicality. And let me show you the trunk of this car. And you can actually fit some bodies if that is what you do. But you can also sleep in this car and I've actually slept in this car a few times. Let me show you. You just jump into the car like this. You fold the rear seats down like this. And you've got immediately a comfortable bed. Let me show you. So you can actually sleep here. And if you excuse me for a second, that's exactly what I'll do now. But what is an estate car exactly? Estate cars or station wagons are essentially sedans with the rear end of a hatchback. In fact, both the sedan and the sport wagon version of the 159 have the exact same length, 466 centimeters. This means that everything remains the same between either version when it comes to rear legroom, materials or suspension type. The only difference being in the fact that the roof line continues in an almost straight line and thus the car has a completely different rear end. If you reached this point in the video, I think it'd be a great idea if you subscribed. This is a new channel for me and having more subscribers helps a lot with getting the YouTube algorithm to do its magic. Thank you very much. And if all that space in the trunk is not good enough for you, you've also got roof bars, where you can also take far more luggage than you can take in the back. And if you want, it's also a sitting spot. You just climb up and sit down here. And if you travel somewhere, you can actually enjoy the view better from up here. But where the real advantages of a station wagon really show is right here when it comes to its driving dynamics. You can have all the cargo space of an SUV or even better, but all the driving characteristics of a sedan or a hatchback or even a sports car in cases like the Audi RS6 or the Mercedes-Benz C63 Estate or E63 Estate. It makes it so much better, you've got the best of both worlds. So when it comes specifically to the Alfa Romeo 159, what is it like to drive? I should say that I bought it because a friend of mine that works specifically with Italian cars and Alfa Romeos wanted me to test drive it. I previously had an Alfa Romeo 166 with a 3.0 liter Busso engine and it was fantastic to drive. So I test drove this 159 and I just thought, okay, this is the perfect daily driver. So I bought it. I think it has a great balance between like a firm suspension, something that is not that soft, and something that is very uncomfortable to drive in. And same with the steering. Actually, I think the steering feel is the best uh, in its class, or, or at least the best that I've driven. Perhaps the only car in its class that I've driven that could potentially rival the 159 when it comes to steering feel is the BMW 3 Series. But if you're comparing your car to the BMW 3 Series, you know, that's a pretty good comparison. This car in particular has a six-speed manual. I believe it was also offered with an automatic, but I'm not that sure. And the six-speed manual is just great. I love it. It's perhaps a little bit too stiff when it comes to gear changes, but that's okay with me. This car has 206,000 kilometers and it genuinely drives almost like new. Although I have to say that I've already bought its replacement and I'm selling it to a friend next week. But I love this car, I genuinely do. 
And now let's see how this car accelerates on the highway. These alphas come fairly well equipped, and in the case of this unit, it has leather seats. If there's one thing Alpha has always done very well, is the quality and durability of its leather. Cruise control, dual zone climber control, power folding mirrors, seen and automatic headlights, automatic wipers, and the usual array of safety equipment for its era that consists of seven airbags, stability control, and traction control. But besides their practicality and their driving dynamics, there is one huge factor in which these station wagons are so, so much better than SUVs, and it's fuel consumption. I can't believe we're in a world where everybody's talking about uh, taking care of the environment and electric cars and being fuel efficient. And at the same time, we're promoting SUVs that pollute and consume so much fuel. So air resistance, which is the main driver of fuel consumption in a car, is a function of both its aerodynamic coefficient and the total frontal area of a car. So how can you have a fuel efficient car when you've got a total frontal area that's bigger than a garage door? It makes no sense. No matter how efficient, how aerodynamic you make that design, there's no way to make it work. And that's the reason why cars like these are so much more fuel efficient than SUVs. Concerning reliability, I've actually got to say that my car has proven to be incredibly reliable. At just over 200,000 kilometers now, and having owned it for over 30,000, these JTD engines do live up to their bulletproof reputation. I did have two issues. One with the CV joint that simply blew up and sent transmission grease all over the engine bay, which required the replacement of the serpentine belt, and the other being a dual mass flywheel that reached the end of its life, which requires a new clutch and sat me back a bit over a thousand euros. A failing CV joint is a minor issue and not an uncommon one on any car of this mileage, and the clutch is something that is usually replaced around this time on these cars as well. The only real issue that these cars may have comes with the M32 manual GM transmission, which is usually said to be prone to failing early in quite spectacular ways. I've talked a lot with the mechanics at the shop where I take my car, which again specializes in Alphas and other Italian cars, and they mentioned that they haven't seen such failures in cars powered by the 1.9 diesel engines, but have indeed seen them often on cars powered by the 2.2 liter. There is another argument in favor of station wagons, which is its price. It's much cheaper to buy these cars new than it is to buy an equivalent SUV. However, it's even much better when you want to buy them used, as they depreciate much more. Now, I know that's not such a good thing if you're actually buying these cars new, because you don't want your car to depreciate, but for people like me who buy them used, it's so much better. You get such a good deal when it comes to used station wagons that you just don't get in SUVs. So my last and final point for why you should actually get a station wagon instead of an SUV is its design. I think it's actually so much more stylish and better than the monstrosity that most SUVs are. For petrol heads, station wagons are already cool. Everybody loves them. Everybody wants an Audi RS6. But in the real world where people see cars as just a way to go from point A to point B, that doesn't happen. This is just us uncool as it gets. And that's why I'm trying to change that. So if there's one thing both petrol heads and Greta Thunberg can agree on, is that your next car should be a station wagon and not an SUV. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you like this car as much as I do. See you next time and don't forget to like it and subscribe for more content on this channel.